That's what I hope. That people like will look at the ordinary and know that there's like that potential for the extraordinary in lots of things that we throw away. Well, hello and welcome back to the Quest for Zest. I'm Clark Underwood and today I am headed to meet Virginia Fleck at her home studio. She has an art practice where she's making sculptures out of can tabs, like pop your drink open, take a sip can tabs. They're big, they're bright, they're sparkly, they're brilliant. I can't wait to see them, but first I gotta get there and I'll see you there. Glad you're in, I found you. <laughs> yep, this is where you find me. Wow, what a great space. It's so tall. So is this where you're spending all your time making your sculptures? Yeah. And do you call them sculptures? Yeah. Well, I saw your work online and at first I thought, wow, that is a, that is a fascinating piece. And then on, on second inspection, I was like, those are Coke tabs and a lot of Coke tabs. What was it that led you to start creating with such a, a common material. I was taking a welding class about 30 years ago, I guess. And I was at a scrap yard looking for just the right piece of metal and there was a giant bin. It was a 55 gallon drum cut in half and it looked like a treasure chest. It was filled with the can tabs and it sparkled. It was like the afternoon sun and, and I saw it and I was like, it's so beautiful. Like it was sparkling and I was really pregnant and emotional and I went up to it and I was just awestruck by the beauty. There's a, a persistent belief that the can tabs are made out of a very special aluminum that's worth a lot of money. And is that just urban legend of people like yes, this, this special part that is a tool and has an action must be more significant than the container? Yeah, I think it has to do with the thickness and our tendency as humans towards magical thinking. See, I was wondering how much soda or canned water you were having to drink to make something this impressive. About 40,000 in this case. 40,000? This one has wow. about 40,000 can tabs. See, if you had said, Clark, how many do you think's there? I'd be like, oh, maybe 4,000. No, just a quick 40,000. Add a zero, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is super impressive. And for every can tab, there's a safety pin. I chain them together with safety pins. So there's a lot of safety pins. Most recently, in about 2018, I, I remembered that I, you know, I've saved every can tab that's come through my house since then. So um, they were in boxes out in my shed, and I thought, I wonder if I have enough to make like a big ponytail or a waterfall. Then there was a call for art. Um, it was called a show called The Femme Abstract, and I proposed a waterfall um, made out of the, that went from the ceiling to the floor. And then I said, how high are the ceilings in this space? And she said, they're 30 foot tall. I went, okay. And so I built a little model out of chains and uh, little necklace chains and took pictures of it with little scale model people and she accepted it. And then I had to build it in like five weeks. So <laughs> got a lot of people involved. And so that was the next big piece. I'd done lots of little pieces over the years. Was it the Coke tabs that started you on the path of like, I want to use um, trash or like kind of the eco theme or, or no. was that the plan all along? I was already into trash. <laughs> I got trashy in art school in Boston actually. Working with found objects really sparked my imagination. I was really interested in the objects and their, their latent meanings. I read your artist statement, and in there you talked about magical thinking, and the and you used that that type of uh, language. What is the magic for you in this material and in your practice? You know, the magic for me is all in the transformative aspect of you know transcending the utility. It visually transcends, but also conceptually. What I hope that experience is 
um, especially these pieces with tabs and depending on how it's lit from a distance it looks like it's made of something valuable and then when you get close you recognize that it's something that you might have been throwing away your whole life or recycling and um, so having that encounter with the familiar like seeing it as something really valuable and then realizing this is common. I have these. I have safety pins. You see yourself as, as being able to also create. That's what I hope. That people like will look at the ordinary and know that there's like that potential for the extraordinary in lots of things that we throw away. I think another thing that for me that's interesting about using the uh, the can tabs, you use it to open your can and then you never reference it again. Yeah. Looking at something and feeling beauty from it gives a very like um, perspective shift to the things that maybe you just glance over yeah. all the time that that hold a, hold beauty. I feel like it's it's a service <laughs> to um, retrain how we think. I'm really interested in these canned beverages too because uh, when I first started doing these, it was silver can tabs. There was barely a gold can tab. And when I made the monumental piece for the um, Femme Abstract show, I saw that there are all kinds of colors. I think it's like a new frontier of branding. That was a really interesting part that they started seeing this as a way to differentiate their product from other products. They know the mythical power of the can tab that you yeah. know. Or the mythical power of the beverage, which is also really interesting. It's like taking the sacrament and uh, you'll be transformed by the energy drink. You know, the way that they're marketed to us is that they're gonna make us better. That's, that's a very vulnerable part of us. Like if you're holding this, it's the good life. It's the good life. Did you ever doubt the work or was the process so rewarding that you were like, hey, if no one ever gives a hoot about my, my Cantab chandeliers, I'm still making them. Or was there a, a certain moment that you're like, oh, people do have an uncanny response to my tabs. Well, you've just outlined the activity of my brain every day in the studio. Like, what am I doing? This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is never gonna work. Especially when I'm making these samples, like this doesn't look like anything I'll ever use, or I don't know if I just wasted my time. And then I'll walk in at night and maybe the light will be shining and I'll, on, on this wall and I'll be like, oh, this is fantastic. I love this. You know, what am I gonna do with it? To be a full-time artist, and really dedicated is like you have to be able to deal with that humility of that self-doubt and the struggle and what people see is the success end of that well it's really cool to hear your like magical mystical and like spiritual experience with it because there certainly is like a huge redemption from the scrapyard and from the trash to the the beautiful sculpture in a, in a gallery that's making people think and making people think about, you know, their own transformation. It's really beautiful. I hadn't really thought of it in terms of redemption, but that is, that's really good. What is this can squid? <laughs> What's going on here? Well, this is a, an experiment. This is one of those experiments that took weeks. There's netting underneath here. Look at that in the light. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. I think that's the look for your next gallery opening right there. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. It wears really well. And if you're feeling more introverted, you do this. Oh yeah, that'll protect you, you. Protect you from satellites and stuff. It does. Yeah. <laughs> well, it has been so cool to get the real 101 on can tabs and how you're using them to make your your art that pulls magical thinking out of people. And I just so appreciate you letting me come in and see your work and hear about your journey. So just want to say thank you so much. Well, it was a great day spent in the studio of Virginia Fleck. And it was so cool to see her perspective on the can tab and how her magical thinking has led her to be able to make sculptures that offer a perspective change for everyone. And my perspective has been changed included in that. And on that note, I think I'm gonna head out of here and 
crack open a refreshment for myself. So, until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the quest for zest. Ciao.